Hello everyone, I'm pretty. And yes, that is my name. And I'm an engineer as well. Do you know what? I have engineering in me, within me, around me, in my blood, in my family. And I have my dad in the audience who's an engineer. Yay! And we have Emma's dad who's an engineer as well. So it actually took me four years at uni to be civil. Four years. <laughs> and then on top of that, it took me another three years, another three years to get a doctorate in engineering in water and sanitation. Now you must be wondering why I wasted three years of my life. <laughs> uh, and it was really hard work, by the way. So to give you a bit of background to this, um, when I was young, well, actually I'm still young, uh, <laughs> I was a huge, huge fan of Doctor Who. I just loved Doctor Who and the TARDIS, and I felt I had to get close to Doctor Who. So the closest I could get to Doctor Who was by being Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. <laughs> I really tried. I tried my best to get close to Doctor Who. And uh, as I told you earlier, I'm pretty. Uh, I came to this country a few years ago, and I tried really hard to blend in as an engineer. So I used to go to all these engineering conferences. Um, typically, I would walk into a room full of old white men. I would try and blend in. So I'd walk in <laughs> and say, hello, I'm pretty. And then they would say, of course you are. <laughs> or option number two, hmm, she's vain, and just walk off to the bar. <laughs> Or option number three, um, yes, what is your name? <laughs> My name is Pretty. Uh, what do you do? I'm a civil engineer. Oh, and I'm not sure if they were surprised by my name or by my profession. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm a woman. <laughs> as you can see, I'm an Indian. I'm an engineer. And I talk shit. <laughs> so I actually don't have a lot going for me, but in spite of all my problems, in spite of all my problems, I had a pretty good stint in engineering career, in engineering industry. But that at some point in my life, I felt I had to embrace a student lifestyle. So I became an academic. <laughs> so now I'm a senior lecturer in University College London. So, a senior lecturer is a person who knows everything, unlike a lecturer or a professor who knows nothing at all. <laughs> and there are three reasons, there are three reasons why I really, really love my job. Reason number one, I inspire future engineers. Reason number two, I train engineers on how they can change the world through engineering. But the third reason, which is the most important one, is I love talking about toilets. <laughs> and I have 50 students trapped in the classroom with no escape. And they have to suffer through an hour of me talking about toilets. <laughs> the only break that they get from this is a loo break. <laughs> now, as you know, I love talking about toilets. But if we think about toilets, there's one country which just jumps to the mind. Yes, you've guessed it, Japan. <laughs> so this is the country which has the high-tech, awesome, legendary, super smart toilets. Amazing gadgets, amazing gadgets. I think Doctor Who has one in his TARDIS. <laughs> I actually went to Cardiff to the Doctor Who exhibition centre to check this out. <laughs> But sadly, they did not have the toilets on display. I wonder why. <laughs> oh well, never mind. So the reason I love Japanese toilets is that they customize things for you. You can adjust the temperature of the seat to your own liking. Number two, um, they have two jet sprays in key, very strategic locations. <laughs> not only that, you can actually control the velocity the flow of water and the temperature to your liking. So two weeks ago, I went to my friend's house 
And of course, as soon as I walked in, she knew I was an engineer. So she said, I've just installed a Japanese toilet. <laughs> and of course, me, uh, I did not care about dinner or an idle conversation with her. I just rushed into the bathroom. <laughs> and I spent about 15 minutes spinning around with the switches. And all of a sudden, there was this spray of jet in my eyes. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, it's her fault, actually. She forgot to give me the engineer's manual. <laughs> I'm an engineer. I need instructions. So it's all her fault, actually. But uh, the sad thing is, I actually don't work on high-tech Japanese toilets. So a large part of my work involves thinking about cities, towns, where there is no infrastructure at all. So there's no toilets, there's no tap, there's no water and sanitation infrastructure. Now think about this. What would you do in the settings? What would people do, actually, without toilets, without the pipes? Right? Um, and this is a high-tech, amazing, legendary solution developed by people in Asia and Africa. Um, it's far superior than the Japanese toilet. <laughs> it's something called the flying toilet. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me go through this very carefully. And you have to pay attention to this, just in case you want to try this out. <laughs> but please, do not try it out here. <laughs> so it's a four-step process. Step number one, wake up in the morning, find a quiet corner, make sure no one is around, and do your business. <laughs> Step number two, find a plastic bag. Now, you have to make sure the plastic bag is not transparent or see-through. <laughs> uh, I think a small black bag would do the job really nicely. Uh, take a plastic black bag, take the contents into the bag. Step number three, tie a knot. Um, continuing step number three, tie another knot at exactly 90 degrees. <laughs> this is to make sure the bag is airtight. <laughs> can see the bag should look like this. <laughs> now pay attention to this. This is the most important step. Step number four. Uh, wait until it's dark. Something like this. Step outside. Look around. Uh, by the way, it's a slum, so there's no electricity, so it is dark. Except for that one light bulb, which is lit by a dodgy neighbor who's got an illegal electricity connection. Um, dogs are barking in the background. <laughs> Look around, <laughs> take the bag, <laughs> once again a 90 degree angle, and with a nice graceful motion, chuck the bag. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> By the way, don't worry about him, he's an engineer, he can take shit. <laughs> If you were to open the bag, uh, there would be a chocolate with a wrapper saying it was a pleasure sharing. <laughs> no need to say thanks, it was really a pleasure sharing. <laughs> um, by the way, did I forget to mention that it is just a matter of coincidence if this bag lands at the doorstep of the most disgusting, annoying, creepy neighbor on the street. <laughs> just a coincidence. <laughs> So that's it for the day, mission accomplished. And then wake up the next day, walk to the front porch, open the door, there are 20 bags of poo. <laughs> <laughs> so go and pick them up and then repeat the whole process again. <laughs> so this is what we call the flying toilet sequence. <laughs> Jokes apart, I think it's really bad that people have to live in such shitty conditions, actually. <laughs> Instead of people going off to sell dodgy SIM cards and kids going off to schools where there are no teachers, they have to spend their days strategizing on how to dispose of their poo. Really sad. So that is why I think I'm actually really lucky that I, that I live in a modern city like London, in spite of Southern Rail. <laughs> <laughs> the reason being that when I wake up and when I go and do my business, I know that from my toilet there's actually a pipe which takes the mixture out onto another pipe into the street. Now you really have to appreciate those <coughs> geeky, nerdy, freaky engineers who spend hours and hours in front of their computers. 
in front of very complex software packages and spreadsheets, trying to get this right, trying to get the size of the pipe right. Now, <laughs> if the pipe is too small, it gets blocked. Now, if the pipe is too big, with very little mixture, uh, <laughs> things do not flush. <laughs> so you have to admire those engineers to get this right. So in a city like London, engineers fortunately do generally get this right. So you have the mixture from your houses, which are transported from little pipes to bigger pipes, and it's collected in a big pile of poo <laughs> in the city, which we nicely know as the London Wastewater Treatment Plant. <laughs> At the treatment plant, the wastewater goes through biological, chemical processes and gets treated, and then you have clean water, which is discharged into River Thames. And then you drink the water. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you might want to switch to beer at this point. <laughs> and do you know something? The water gets treated not once, twice, but seven times. <laughs> this is really your calling to go and pint of, uh, buy a pint of beer now. <laughs> As an academic, um, I get to go to conferences. And next month, I'm actually going off to Chennai for a conference. This is a very important high-level conference where we're going to get global experts into the room and we are going to talk about poo. <laughs> <laughs> now, we cannot call the conference the poo conference. <laughs> <laughs> so the fancy word for managing poo and pee is fecal sludge management. <laughs> and not only that, this is the fourth conference in the series. So the name of this conference is FSM4. <laughs> organized in a five-star hotel in India. So I'm going to be sat at a five, in a five-star hotel during lunchtime, probably munching on paneer tikka masala, <laughs> talking to someone, munching on chicken biryani with peas, and this is how the conversation is going to go. Okay, nice to meet you. Uh, it's very spicy curry, by the way. <laughs> so what are we going to do about the poo? <laughs> Actually, there's a lot we could do with it. We can use poo to run vehicles. We can connect to poo to solar lighting. <laughs> we can generate coal pellets out of poo. Actually, you know what? We can actually solve the energy crisis on this planet through poo. So such is the power of poo. <laughs> so my cunning plan in the future is to get myself promoted to a professor so I don't have to know anything. <laughs> and then, it's a pretty, people can call me Professor Pretty Parikh. But you know what's going to happen, right? People are still going to get my name wrong, and they're probably going to call me Professor PP. <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind about that. Um, I'm still excited to be an academic and engineer because I make cities free of shit. <laughs> And on this happy note, I'm now going to bugger off to my favorite tube station, which is Waterloo. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.